Hello, I'm James and I'm here to talk to you about Yeti Fish Houses and winterizing. Your Yeti Fish House Grand Escapes and Tracks Editions with bathrooms will have water systems in them similar to any RV. It is important to winterize that before using your Yeti in cold weather situations to prevent freezing and damage. The first step in the process of winterizing your Yeti Fish House is to drain your holding tanks, your black water tank, your gray water tank, and also your fresh water tank. We've already taken the time to drain our black and gray water tanks before starting this video, so I'm going to move right into the fresh water tank, which you will find behind this panel. All right, the first step we're going to do is drain our fresh water holding tank with this valve. By giving this valve a quarter turn, all the fresh water will leave the holding tank and go onto the ground. Once the tank is draining, we can go to the valve that feeds fresh water from the tank to the pump. We simply give that a quarter turn. We have closed this valve. Then we come to this valve, which is our RV antifreeze intake valve, and we turn that a quarter turn. Once we've verified there's no pressure trap in the system, we can continue draining our system by going outside and draining the hot water heater. All right, the next step that we're going to do is drain our water heater. We've already drained our black holding tank, our gray holding tank, and our fresh water tank. Before draining your hot water heater, you want to make sure there's no pressure inside the system and that the hot water heater is not hot. If the water heater is hot, turn it off and come back when it's cooled. Once it's cooled, open the hot water valve at your sink inside to relieve any pressure and also to help uh, bleed the water out of the system without creating an airlock. You can do that at the bathroom sink or the kitchen sink. And once you've opened that valve, the tank is cool, you can remove the drain plug and drain your tank. What I've done before I came outside is I turned on the hot water valve with the pump in the off position to verify that there's no stored pressure in my hot water system. And now I can go ahead, open the cover and remove the drain plug. The drain plug is located in the bottom left corner of the hot water heater and you'll need a 15 16 socket and a ratchet to remove it. Now that we've given our water heater time to drain and has completely drained inside, we can reinstall the plug back into the hole. Be sure not to over tighten the plug because it's a plastic plug for safety reasons and can be easily over torqued. All right, we've been outside. We've taken care of business with our hot water heater. It's drained, the plug is back in. Now we can come back inside. We can go to the hot water heater and turn the bypass valves to make sure that we don't pump any RV antifreeze into our hot water heater system. All right, now we're going to bypass the hot water heater. This is the valve that feeds cold water into the hot water heater. We're going to want to shut that valve off, give it a quarter turn. This is the valve that lets hot water come out of the hot water heater. We're going to shut that off as well. This is the valve that opens up the cold side to the hot side so we can push antifreeze through the hot water lines of the house. It's important to push RV antifreeze through the entire water system, hot and cold, to make sure that we don't freeze and break during the winter if there's potentially any water that's trapped in there. That's another reason why we bypass the hot water heater so we can push RV antifreeze through the hot water system. All right, back down to our fresh water tank. Our systems are built with a hose to go right into your antifreeze jug. You do not need to pour RV antifreeze into your fresh water tank. The fresh water tank has been drained. We're gonna close the drain valve and we're going to go to the valve between the water tank and the water pump and close that. And we're gonna open the valve that goes to our RV antifreeze intake. What this allows us to do is pump antifreeze directly from the bottle into the pump and through the system without contaminating our fresh water holding tank or our hot water heater or anything else with antifreeze, only the lines. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the cap of our antifreeze jug. And we're gonna go ahead and stick the hose in carefully not to make a mess. We have that in. Now, I like to go around and make sure my valves are turned off on these sinks. And I will turn on the water pump. 
Okay, the water pump is on. So now there's pump pressure in the system with just antifreeze. So I can go to the closest sink. Now we're gonna run a little antifreeze into our sink. Start with the hot water. Run until you get a nice flow of pink antifreeze. Let it run down the drain and make sure it fills the P-trap fully with antifreeze to prevent any freezing issues there. Now we're gonna do the cold water. Same thing, turn it on, let it run. Get a nice flow of pink antifreeze. Go ahead and let it run down the drain. Now that we've ran antifreeze into the sink and filled the P-traps, we're gonna to move to the bathroom and repeat the process with the bathroom sink, the shower, and the toilet. Now that we're here in the bathroom, I like to start with the shower. I remove the shower head from the holder and I will gently lay it on the floor very near the drain to keep to minimize the mess of the pink antifreeze that could going to spray all over when we run our faucets. There again, I'll start with the hot water. Yep, we got a nice flow of pink. We can turn that off, cold water, nice flow of pink. There, we've successfully winterized the shower. Now we have some models that actually have a drain in the shower and now would be a great time to run a little extra antifreeze down the drain to make sure the drain pump itself has been fully winterized. Now that we've finished the shower, we'll move to the bathroom sink, start with the hot water, nice flow of pink, and then to the cold water, nice nice flow of pink and that's enough to fill the p-trap inside of the fish house plumbing to make sure that that does not freeze the last thing we need to winterize to make sure there's plenty of antifreeze is our toilet okay simply step on the valve to flush and you can see there's nice pink fluid flowing down our toilet bowl all right now we have successfully winterized all of our plumbing fixtures by making sure we've got an adequate amount of pink RV antifreeze flowing through the system. The last step is to put the hose back into the cabinet. And congratulations, you've successfully winterized your Yeti fish house and you're ready for the ice fishing season. Good luck.